بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما Okay the next thing we'll try to see the lab prerequisites to verify the NAT configurations we'll try to understand the prerequisites so configure the IP addressing so in this example I'm going to use a router 1 which is also my NAT device so I'm going to assume this is connecting to the service portal okay and we have some internal users like 192.168.1.subnet which are my private users and when they are sending a traffic from this source and trying to access some servers here. So I'm simulating some servers. I just connected a router and then a switch with some with some computers here. And actually these are servers and these servers will be simulating my host on the internet. So I don't have a real uh, kind of, you know, a real internet connection. So basically this is my topology here, which I have already connected, okay. So typically in the production scenarios, the NAT can be either configured on your router or on the service port. Depends. Like if you take in a normal home home internet connections, let's say in your building, you have these are all apartments uh, users. Let's say so all the users. Maybe you have uh, in a home internet connections we don't do NAT. So basically, what happens is in the home internet connections, these are our wireless routers which we use. They all go and connect to the, you know, kind of switch and from there it connects to the service port of device. And the service port is responsible for translating the NAT. And of course, this service port is again assigning the IPs to your routers. There's a process over there through DHCP again. So basically, the NAT is done on the service port of site, especially on the customer environment. Okay. So if you take the same example in our company, company scenario, in a production network scenario, then basically these are all the users who are connecting in my company and this is my gateway okay so so typically in your company scenario it will be like this so this is your lab and we connect to our gateway and from there we connect to the service port of course you get some public ip here let's say 100.111 so what i'll be doing is the net is configured on my router so what we'll do is we'll uh, get some public ips Okay, so we get some public IPs from the service portal. We purchase the range of public IPs. Let's say if I'm using slash 30 also, I get four public IPs. In that two, I cannot use the first and the last and maximum I can use two. So I'll be using one for my internal web server. And then I'm going to translate with the static NAT. And the rest of the users, they all will be able to access internet. So these are the users. They all will be translating using the pad port address translation let's say so you can have more than this this is a kind of simple example to understand and here the nat is done on our own router okay so so basically what we want is because in production scenarios especially when you have thousands of users uh, whatever the concepts we use like in our home connections that's not going to scale so as we are using a dedicated Cisco routers or any other vendor routers and or maybe a firewall which will be doing NAT for us. Okay, so this is kind of a production scenario what you will see. And in my in my example, I'm going to simulate the same way because I don't have a real ISP connection. So I'm going to simulate a router here. This router is uh, simulating my service portal. And from there, the traffic is going over there. So the first step is I'll be configuring the static NAT. So basically what I'll do is we'll try to configure the static, uh, static NAT. The prerequisite first we'll see. Okay, so the first thing we'll try to see the configure the basic IP addressing here. Of course, the IP addressing you have to configure as per the diagram. So we assume this is your public interface where we are connecting to the internet. And the next thing is we'll be configuring the routing. The routing is required. Basically, what we need is we need to make sure that this 182.168.1.subnet should be able to reach this servers. So reachability is important. So in the real scenarios, the reachability will be in a different way. Like in the real scenarios, we'll be using, uh, we'll be configuring some kind of default route. And this default route will ensure that uh, when the user sitting in my LAN is trying to access any server on the internet, 
the router do not have a route and automatically it is going to route the packet over the service portal and the service portal knows exactly where is that server so basically this service portal is going to maintain some kind of bgp routes some kind of routing protocol used and it knows where is that actual server he's trying to access and send the request to the server so we are not seeing this in this case in our example there's no bgp this router knows this network through connected okay because they are connected networks so in our case we are not using bgp again um, as i said we are not simulating the exact real scenarios okay so this is something beyond the scope of the exams ccn exams here so which means the traffic uh, will reach the actual server and when this server replies back so it will reply to the service portal and that service portal will again uh, need to know exactly where is that server means means uh, how to route the packet which means it is it must have a route of the customer but whereas in our case we have translated this 182.168.1. subnet let's say which means this service portal should have a route to read route the packet back to this one right either static or dynamic we learn the routing but normally this is not possible because this is your private ip and there is a possibility that multiple customers will be using the same private ip right and of course we don't use dynamic routing again so basically the service portal will have a static route for the public ip so whatever the public ip we have used basically the service portal will have a will have a route or static routing for that public ip so which means if you if you check this scenario here in my case from my router towards the service portal will be configuring the default route and the packet will route and reach the server return back and the service portal will have a static route for the public ap whatever is used for translation so in my example i'm using a 50 not 50 not network that is a network i'm using assume this is the network which is allocated by service portal so i'll be using this public ip okay so that's how it's going to be the setup uh, this is your prerequisite for all the types of nats so let's try to quickly set up this so that you know when we do the labs this configuration is ready so the physical connections are okay and i think the ip addresses already configured on on the devices so on the end devices i do have the ip configuration okay so let me see the configuration on these routers and i i think i didn't save this configuration so let me quickly go and configure this so i'll start with the router one so if i say show ip interface brief i have no configuration so what i'll be doing is i'll be configuring the ip and then also the next thing i'll be configuring the default routing two things at once so g0 by zero interface and then the ip address is 192.168.1.100 that is the gateway address and then on serial interface i'm going to assign the ip address of 101.1.1 in the production scenarios this ip will be given by the service portal so most likely this ip will be a public ip and typically decided by the service portal so that it can be a static ip or the service portal may use a dynamic uh, dhcp server to provide the ip address for this device okay so here we assume it's a static ip and assume this is the address what is uh, told by the service portal to use so we'll be using that okay so the next thing is we'll configure the default routing 0, 0, 0, 0, and the next top address is 100.1.1.2. So what we are doing is we are going to configure the default route here 0, 0, 0, 0, towards 100.1.1.2. And then we'll save these configurations. So probably the next time when I want to load this topology, I don't need to do it again. Okay. So we got these configurations on the router one. And the same way I'm moving on to the next router, that is your service portal router name isp and if you verify the ip configurations i don't have ip configurations here so i'll quickly configure as per my topology so i'm using this address so this is kind of simulating you know kind of service portal here 
in the real scenarios uh, it will be different and the ip address is 100.1.1.2 with slash 24 or slash whatever the slash value it's up to you so let's say show ip interface brief anyway the interface is up even if i don't give the clock right so let me just quickly verify the reachability between the two routers just to confirm that we do have reachability and as well as i do have reachability to the servers okay 200.111 right that is ip address 200.112 that's an ip address again in the here in this scenario this router is connected directly to this one that's the reason we do have reachability in the real scenarios again these servers are not in the service product network they will be placed somewhere but this service product knows exactly how to reach so that is through bgp routing okay so this is my setup you can save the topology normally up to this point so that you know next time when you're trying to do the labs for uh, let's say for your static NAT or dynamic NAT or any other NAT, you can go with these initial configurations. So the next thing is, let me see if I had if I have reachability between the between the LAN user here to this one. So will will I have reachability? Let me see. So meantime, just try to tell me if if it is possible. Let me try to ping. Again, one thing I actually forgot, I forgot to write the static route here, the reverse static route. Now, again, as I said, there will be a static route. You can either configure static route directly to this one. But again, we'll be translating this address later on. So there's no point in writing the static route for this. So we'll be writing a static route for 50 network, which is the public address range. So I'll be using the public IPs in this range of 5111 slash 24 submit. Okay. So let, let me just quickly go and configure a static route here. So I'll say IP route 50 network slash 24 and it is 100.111. So this is for the reverse routing so that the packet should come back here. So save the topology up to this point. So will I have reachability now? Let me see. So still you don't have reachability. And the reason is simple. If you know the routing concepts, what we have seen, you can easily troubleshoot this because when the packet is initiated, the source address is 182.168.1.1 and the destination address is 200.111. That's what we are trying to do here. Now, in this case, the packet will route to the gateway and this gateway will say, okay, based on the default route, I'm going to send a packet to this ISP. And this ISP router says, okay, 200.111, you can go to this host. The packet goes up to here. So now the packet is going to return back. So when it is returning back, the source address is 200.111. And the destination address is 182.168.1.1, right? Because we didn't translate, remember? We did not do any translations. So it's a normal, normal route packet. So when the packet returns back, it will say, it will send the packet to the router that is ISP in our case. So it reaches the ISP. And now this ISP will check the routing table. Do I have a route for 192.168.1. network? I don't, do I have a route? So if you go to the ISP here, if I say show IP route, we do have a route for 50 network, but we don't have a route for 192.168.1. network. So if you write a static route for 1. network, that should work, that will work normally. Okay, but in our case, as our requirement is the NAT, and this NAT device is going to translate this 182 network to public IP 5111, which I didn't do that, and that's the reason we don't have reachability now. But after I implement the NAT, you must have reachability because after you implement the NAT, what happens is this destination address will change to public IP because of the translation. Okay, when the packet initiates, it will be this. But when it goes outside the service border, this address will change to 5111. So now, now the, there will be a difference now. Okay, so once you implement the NAT, you should have reachability as per this routing. Okay, so just ignore this right now because don't waste your time in just going to fix it because this is not going to work unless you do the NAT 
or unless you change the routing to the 192 network. But here, as I said, our goal is to verify the NAT. So that's the reason I do have a static route configured on the service product for the public IP, what I decided to use. Means whatever is allocated by the INA, depending upon your region. 